Hey, how's it going? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Whitney and here on my channel we mostly explore fragrances, but I sometimes like to throw in other content here and there just for fun. Before we get into today's video, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has viewed, liked, commented, shared, and subscribed to my channel. I appreciate it. So in today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit fun and I wanted to, well, all my videos fun, but I wanted to share the fragrances in my collection and some fragrances that I've just experienced in stores that I don't own um, and sharing with you guys what random things they remind me of. So it started to get to the point where I'm like, okay, this smells like something, but it wasn't a fragrance. It wasn't another fragrance. So I have a, a decent amount of fragrances that I want to share with you that fit into this topic. So let's get into it. So first up, I have two fragrances, both of which I took from my mom, and they are Very Irresistible, Low in Rose by Givenchy and Hanai Mori by, wait, this might just be called Hanai Mori. Yeah. So this is the Eau de Toilette version of Hanai Mori by Hanai Mori. It might be called Butterfly. I'm not entirely sure but it looks like this just in case you want it for yourself. Uh, so the reason these are the first up in my collection, first up in this video, are that both of these fragrances remind me of the smell of like doll heads or Barbies. They, this one, it has like a prominent berries and then the sandalwood in here comes off quite creamy and it's very, like just feminine and then for the low and rose it's a predominantly rose fragrance there's a juiciness to it as well but for some reason on my skin it just smells like a doll so that's these two so next up is a fragrance that i don't own and that is burberry her eau de parfum by burberry and the random thing that that reminds me of is strawberry chapstick by the chapstick brand i didn't get it first like off the top when i first smelled it but as it dried down on my skin it just smelled very much like chapstick and it wasn't off-putting or anything but my problem with the fragrance was that i mean it just didn't project and it didn't really impress me in terms of the scent the dry down at least on me then again i didn't really go ham in terms of how much i sprayed on me so there could be that element but is the biggest thing that i remember from that experience of smelling burberry her was that oh this smells like chapstick doesn't smell bad now just smells like chapstick to me <laughs> so next up i have a malfi sunray from the sara emotions collection which is the collection from sara that's a collaboration with joe malone and this fragrance which is an eau de parfum smells like okay first of all let me tell you what it is so it's essentially like a citrusy fragrance it has i'm pretty sure it's orange blossom there may be let me see so yeah there's orange blossom mandarin orange and bergamot personally with this fragrance i get a lot of neroli like a lot which was almost a turn off because i'm not like the hugest fan of neroli but how it's done in this fragrance works well for me but the random thing that this reminds me of is cereal milk and not just you know when i spray it all over only when i exclusively smell it when i've sprayed it on my chest did i knock my mic i'm sorry so when i spray it on my chest it smells like cereal milk everywhere else it just smells like a citrusy like bright neroli orange blossom fragrance but for some reason it smells like cereal milk on my chest and what's funny is the first time I wore this fragrance, I sprayed it all over like I normally do. And like I was walking about, you know, doing my thing during the day, I'm like, mm, something smells like Fruit Loops. And I haven't had Fruit Loops in forever. And I'm like, it's kind of weird that I smell it. Not thinking it was my fragrance, not at all thinking that it was me. I just was like, I don't really, I don't really question too much things. So I, I was just like, Oh, okay, okay, I, I guess I'm just, I don't know, I guess I was just like, I guess I just smell Fruit Loops today. <laughs> but like, then when I realized, when I like tilted my head down and like smelled the perfume radiating from my chest, I'm like, oh, makes sense. I have no idea why it smells different on different 
places on my body, but that's just how it works with me. <laughs> so next up is another fragrance that I took from my mom. And this was, this all occurred during uh, like mid 2020 when I was really taking a deep dive into fragrances and she had a winner on her hands. So I took it and that is Guerlain's Ancelant. And this is the Eau de Toilette formulation. And this is the, I think they call it like the half orb bottle. They come in like, I think, I can't remember what they call it, but the, the cage, the bird cage style now. Um, but I've smelled the most, at least, no, I haven't actually. I smelled the fragrance, the Eau de Toilette that comes in the bird cage bottle prior to the one that's out now. Cause that's even, that looks even more different than what it, than the updated version of this bottle. But yeah, this is a really pretty juicy powdery scent that I really enjoy. Even though it's an eau de toilette, it's like super powerful. And the random thing that this fragrance reminds me of is bubble bath. And more specifically, the, I'm pretty sure it's called Mr. Bubble Bubble Bath. And that's not off-putting to me at all. It's just like this soapily, soapily. <laughs> I was trying to say soapy and bubbly type of vibe. That's really fun. And it manages to be playful, even though there are a lot of elements to it that make it something that could be considered a more mature leaning scent, but I like it. Yeah, so that's a fun one. So that's Guerlain's Ancelant, the Eau de Toilette version. Okay, so next up is a fragrance that I'm not even sure when I purchased this. It may have been, it may have been this year. It's likely that it was this year, actually. Earlier, the, the maybe the first half of the year. And I think the bottle is what really drew me into purchasing it. Also the fact that it features a note of tuberose. And then also the fact that it's considered, well, it's been discontinued for a while and it's one that's not the easiest to get your hands on. So when I saw it locally, I was like, well, there's my chance. And actually I knew about the fragrance and then I tested it one day on my skin and I actually fell in love um, because it was so unique and unlike anything I'd ever smelled before, at least up until that point. And this was definitely one of my most, mm, yeah, my most expensive, at, mm, no, this probably is the most expensive fragrance that I've ever purchased um, at this point, at least. And the fragrance is none other than Orchid Soleil by Tom Ford. And you can, oh, so in the, oh, ooh. So you can see how much you have it. Usually when there's not like a bright light shining, you could barely see what's inside, but let's not have it facing the light. But yeah, look, 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 talking a lot. <laughs> so this fragrance, like I mentioned, features two bros. And there's a, I think it's Chantilly Cream, so kind of whipped cream-esque note in here and there's cypress as well. So this is like a, a very solar perfume that, should I do it over? Cause I don't, okay, that, that's me. And there you go, all my secrets out. <laughs> so this is a fragrance that I consider to be quite solar and um, let me put it on this way so the light's not shining directly on it. And it's, unique it smells like expensive and unique but that's when you get past the opening which to me reminds me of burnt rubber tires <laughs> like when people are like skidding and there's like smoke that's what the opening smells like to me on my skin at least Smelling it from the nozzle, it does not smell like that. It smells closer to like how it dries down on my skin. But yeah, it has this weird burnt rubber tire opening smell that I don't really know for sure what note in this fragrance would create that effect, but that's what it is. So next up, I have a fragrance combination that is a result of boredom, which is usually how my layering combinations come to be, but this is not one that I would actually wear. But it did remind me of something when I smelled it. So let's start off with what the base was. 
So for the base, I had Narciso Poudre by Narciso Rodriguez. So as you may know, this is a powdery, musky, slightly sweet fragrance um, that I really, 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 really love. And I was playing around with different fragrances one day, seeing what would pair well with this. And I remembered a fragrance in my collection that I barely touch because on its own, it kind of smells like, it has just this screechiness to it and it's kind of annoying. And I don't really like, it didn't smell how I expected it to smell based on the notes it features, which I'm gonna pull up right now. Okay. And so the fragrance that I'm talking about is Rose Marshmallow Candy by Sara Emotions, which again is that collaboration with Joe Malone. And the notes featured, whoops, sorry. The notes featured in this are vanilla, blood orange, and marshmallow. And let me put this down. This is like, okay. The first, first, first thing I smelled was that blood orange and then it just gets screechy and sweet. no this is like what i really wanted out of this was a creamy orange scent but it doesn't really it just it's just the screechy quality about it just kind of makes it not something i really just want to wear now i've had it for a few months now but i never well at least again up until this point there's never been that urge like oh i want to wear rose marshmallow candy today and i almost bought a bigger bottle and then that sold out and they only had this in the discovery set with two other fragrances in this line so i'm kind of happy about this because honestly i'm like let down a little bit but um hold on a second okay right so like i was saying um i don't remember what i was saying but yeah so this is a screechy scent that i've been struggling with but it is one that i paired with the narciso poudre now the result wasn't enjoyable but it was interesting so the f the thing that these two together remind me of is latex balloons like that slightly powdery synthetic -y, latex latexy smell that you get like when you're blowing actually like blowing up balloons and it's so weird <laughs> It's so weird. And then even just smelling the rose marshmallow candy alone, I'm like, it kind of has that latexy vibe on its own, but I guess because of the powdery nature of the Narciso Poudre, that really just emphasizes that quality. So yeah. My apologies for the background noise. So the next scent is one that I don't own, but I have smelled in store. And that scent is Confetti Daydreams by Bath & Body Works. So I smelled this fragrance mist when I was on a uh, mission to build up my collection a few months ago. And even though it is nice, it did really remind me of something kind of random. And that random thing is magazines from the 2000s. So what it was about the fragrance that reminded me of magazines from the 2000s is it smelled literally like the pages of magazines, but also like a mix of a ton of different perfume samples that you would find in magazines at the time, just all mixed together. So it was kind of like, to me at least, a kind of generic, but pretty fragrance from the 2000s. But the first thing I thought about when I smelled it was magazines from the 2000s. So yeah, that's Confetti Daydreams. So since we're on the topic of fine fragrance mists from Bath & Body Works, I have one that's in my collection that reminds me of something random. And that scent is Pink Berry Clouds by Bath & Body Works. And the thing that this reminds me of, which I don't know if I got it from when I first smelled it, but I think I did, was Ambrosia Salad. That, you know, I don't know if it's traditionally a Christmas like Southern dish like southern usa dish but for some reason this smells like ambrosia salad to me so it has that like tart juicy quality to it which you know i guess is reminiscent of the fruits in the salad but then there's a creamy fluffy quality to it which maybe that sponge sugar element from pinkberry clouds is giving me but then there's like a tart quality too which i guess would be coming in from the or at least reminding me of like the mandarin oranges. Child, I don't know. But for whatever reason, 
<laughs> when I smell pink berry clouds, it reminds me of ambrosia salad, which I love. I love ambrosia salad. It's a it's an unusual dish, but I really like it. So yeah. So next up, I have a solid perfume from Lush, and that is Rose Jam. Mm. And let me just show you up close. <laughs> kind of looks like lip balm, right? So this is a pretty literally jammy rose scent and it's not it doesn't smell basic to me it has some unique qualities to it that i really do like and the thing that this reminds me of is turkish delights and it has that you know because turkish delights have that jiggly jammy quality well texture not even jiggly the how would you explain it the gelatinous doesn't sound good Let's just say it has, mm, how do you even explain it? I'm trying to think of what it could be compared to. It's like jam, if jam was a little bit more solid. Okay. And oftentimes it comes like in with powdered sugar. And this has an almost powdery quality to it that I think is kind of reminiscent of Turkish Delights for me and my scent memory. And yeah, I, I recently had some Turkish delights that were um, chocolate covered and I was inspired to layer this fragrance with hot cocoa and cream by Bath and Body Works to kind of really get that Turkish delight vibe. But honestly, on its own, it, it's, it smells quite reminiscent to me of Turkish delights and I really like it. So last up, I have a perfume oil that's a dupe for a fragrance by Montal and the fragrance is Chocolate Greedy. Beep. So this is a, a powdery chocolatey scent that has like a citrus, slightly fruity vibe to it. And when I first smelled this, my mind immediately went to a visit from my British relatives, like when I was, I don't even know how old I must've been, very young. And they had brought these, um, it was like these, this edible paint set for kids. So it had like paint, but they were actually just like different colors of frosting. And the paper were like, um, edible paper sheets so and they had like images printed on them and this fragrance reminds me of that experience because it kind of smells like most specifically the orange and the chocolate paint in the kit and I don't remember actually because <laughs> I loved sweets and stuff from then I don't think I actually <laughs> like properly properly painted <laughs> i think i just like ate the stuff because i just have this memory of me keeping on going to the fridge to like get the paint but <laughs> yeah so this i would definitely see myself getting a full bottle of this fragrance mostly for nostalgia reasons but also it does actually smell quite nice and i'm looking forward to wearing it more this christmas season because of the memories attached to it as well as it just smelling really nice and shining when the weather's a little bit cooler okay y'all so that wraps up everything for today let me know if you have some fragrances that you've encountered or you own that smell like random things i am very curious <laughs> so thank you so much for watching i appreciate you and i'll see you later bye leave it uh and they are very irresistible well let me try the french hold on very irre wait very irresistible <laughs> never mind and hanai mori hanai hanai hannah hanai okay so okay let's try the french let's let's try let's like <coughs> So next up, I have. Oof. So, 
Ooh, this bottle looks as old as it is. <laughs> so dusty. Ooh, something in my eye. What is that? Ooh. Okay, hopefully it's gone. Let's go. Okay, next. Wrapping up, wrapping up, wrap up, wrapping up. So now. Mm -hmm. That was me saying peace and bye. <laughs> Did it.